have to start my day out right <laughs> with a little cup of tea. I'm gonna check some of my indoor plants before I go outside for the day. Every, you know, one, two times a week, I kind of just turn my little cacti here. They're just so adorable in the window. <laughs> and surprisingly, I got these from Ikea and they have been fantastic. Let's see how you're doing. You're okay. One of my newest little babies. That's nice and wet. We put a little um, grate underneath it so that way the air is flowing underneath. So that way it dries out a lot quicker. When it was just sitting there without anything or on a plate, it wasn't drying out enough. And since we did that, it's dried out twice and we were able to water it through nice and it's just been looking fantastic ever since. Got another one of our little succulents. We'll wait till tonight for you. Come and check some of our plants over here. It's doing good. It's doing okay. I have a little tray inside there so the wood here doesn't get doesn't get wet. It's looking really nice and healthy. Look how nice that looks. Got my fern up here, I'll check. Okay, it's doing good. Got my other plant up here. That's good. Look how nice that's looking. On this wall above my, what used to be potting bench inside the house, we put up this really cool metal shelf and I'm just able to put all my little treasures and plants and sprays and all that fun stuff on there. Got our aloe over here. How you doing, buddy? You doing good? Oh, you're so pretty. You're a little dry. Might have to give you a little bit of water there. Then we got our asparagus ferns up top. They're kind of hard to see with the lighting coming in, but they do need a good little cleanup, which I can share that too. Not today though, because I have a lot of seeding to do. So we're going to get started. Got another one there. Got Jason cleaning up after himself. Don't look at me, I'm hideous. <laughs> Check my other little guy here on the table. He feels good and looks super healthy too. I would check these guys, but they're fake. So <laughs> I like the little baskets they're hung in too. Just adds a little, a little touch and flair in here. Check my other fern over here. I think that needs a little bit. I have to check my plants over here. <laughs> check them for some watering. Just go around and check them first. That could use it actually. That one's fine. This one here. That one could. That one's actually good. Remember this one? Remember last night it was closed up and now. Yeah. So it when it got dark, it like closes up. Like all the leaves come up together, and then when it's light, they like fall down and get like wide and bushy again. Yeah. I like that. Mm-hmm. Let's check this guy here. So he's just in a really tiny little pot. I'm gonna show you here. Still in the original pot that I got him in last year. So a lot of my plants are still in the same pots. <laughs> But there's no hole on the bottom of this so when I water it it can drain in there a little bit and then the roots feed off of that which is nice because then you only have to water it maybe like once every four days I'd say so that's what these ones all are too still in the same original pots and I'd water this one but it doesn't need it because this one is also fake so I do mix in some fake plants, so there's less to take care of, but yet you're still getting the feeling because the feeling is just as important. I always make sure to use lukewarm water too. I never use really cold water on my indoor plants. There we go. 
water it. And then I also have water spillage on the bottom into the plate and I just leave it in that because it does absorb up into the plant. This is actually I would say a three, uh, three inch pot here and it does absorb it all. Oh, I'll give this guy a little bit. And we'll give this guy a little bit too. There. My aloe king needs some too. There we go. And I'll get the uh, fern in here. So if you're wondering about the copper water, I actually got this at Home Goods probably about two years ago because now they do sell them and they are so expensive at the store. They're so cute and usable though. There's, I mean, look at how adorable they look in the house. But I could not believe it. I wanted a couple more and they have them there. And when I looked at the price, it was double of what I paid. So. I'm just like, oh my gosh, so this one will have to do for now. So just remember when you do have metal watering cans, when you're done watering, let out the rest of the water and make sure all the water's out because if you keep the water inside, it's gonna end up rusting and you can get holes and you don't want that. You wanna maintain it. See, so I bought this for, you can see right here actually, $12.99. And now the same exact watering can will go for 30 to $40. Insane. <laughs> I've got all of my seeds organized and ready to go outside to seed. I've got lots and lots of seeding to do today. So we're gonna get on it. Don't mind me today. I got a lot of work to do so the hair wasn't the priority on the, on the list today, but we got a lot of seeding to do, but before I go outside for the day, every day, I always have to check my houseplant. So I just figured I'd share that quick little part of my daily routine in life right before we go outside because, hey, it's plant oriented and we've got a lot here in the sun living and dining area. I hope you guys enjoyed the first little section of this, you know, daily routine video and what my days tend to look like but what you won't see here is a specific garden outfit like have you guys been seeing that like why does everyone feel like they need a specific outfit to go outside and work like this is what I've got on just a regular sweatshirt that my kids got me two years ago it says permanently tired I was a little offended like <laughs> But hey, I love the fit of this sweatshirt. So I'm gonna just keep wearing the heck out of it. And then we just got regular jeans on and I've got my mom's slipper socks on with some Skechers Go Walks or whatever these are, I don't know. They're so old though. But like, you don't have to look a certain way in order to get your gardening done, you guys. Like you don't have to wear specific items and go out and buy more in order to play a role. When you do the work, you're in the role. Here's what the garden looks like today and sounds like. I have to clean up that mess in front of the greenhouse. That's okay. Do you hear those sounds? A lot of spring sounds coming in today. Little birdies coming back. So this weekend, it's supposed to be in the 40s. And if it is, then I'm gonna start doing some garden cleanups, not perennials yet, just garden beds. Because the more that we can get cleaned up right now, the easier it'll make it for once we're in the garden season. Cause we do have a couple projects that are happening. And so gotta, gotta get going. It's that time of year, you guys. Whew, so much warmer in here. It is only in the thirties outside right now. Ooh, chilly. Let's show you guys what we've got seated so far and what's in those chambers. 
An update on all those plants that we bumped up. Look at how huge the lemongrass is getting. The rosemary, always a slow grower, but it still got a lot bigger and more full than last time. The sweet grass has really filled in and it's growing its length here. So good. The white sage is really bushed out over there, as you can see. The angelica is probably the biggest difference. That stuff is aggressive. So beautiful though. Look at those leaves. Our brand new banana trees this year, as you can see. Those are the blood banana trees. And then our hybrid willow plants that we bumped up into uh, soil instead of just sitting in a jar of water. So they don't look a lot bigger. I mean, they are, and they've gotten some new leaves, but not a ton of, of growth on the top, but there is a ton of growth inside and underneath the soil. So I feel like it's really focusing on just developing that root structure first. And then I think that's when we'll really see them flourish. Got my speaker out here. I wanna make sure it's charged. Okay, good. So I'm not always a uh, listening to music kind of a person. Um, I like listening to more of like podcasts. I'm gonna put my tea there so that way it's easy and accessible. So let's take a peek at what I'm gonna be growing today. All right, we're doing the Golden Jubilee Anise Hysop, Holy Basil, uh, the Hysop, more lavender, which I'll show you because we do have trays already started. Uh, anise, which actually anise is fine directly sown in the garden too. It actually, I prefer that, but we're going to do some plants anyways in case someone needs them. Uh, fenugreek and lemon balm and feverfew, angelica, uh, fennel, and some more sweet grass. We're going to get the thumbergia started so that way it can be nice and large and get a head start for the garden. Uh, salvia, lemon bee balm, butterfly bush, swamp milkweed, uh, castor beans. Always remember these are poisonous, so if you have dogs, probably not a good idea, but we love how huge and tropical they get. If you have a dog that's not interested in your plants, then you're fine. And then I've also got my own harvested milkweed, which we have a lot of these pods in the house, like so many. And I'm going to directly sow them outdoors in certain areas, but I also want to get some started inside. Every year we keep adding more and more of the milkweed on the property and we notice more and more butterflies. So it's, it's a really, really beautiful thing. And then one of my friends, she wants me to start a certain kind of petunia for her. She saved her own seeds. And then some of the seeds that we did save that we're seeding today, some blue, victor blue victory salvia, uh, purple wave petunia. We had these along the front garden and they were just used for a ground cover last year. And then mojito mint. Um, we're going to do more verbena bonariensis and that's it for today. That's what we're going to do for today. So as you can see, we've got our work cut out for us, but I just want to give you a little seedling update. And what's really cool is how quickly we get things to germinate. We have not changed the way we seed items and varieties. And we share that in our eucalyptus video, uh, seeding eucalyptus. And we also have seeding how to seed 101 all that and it's still the same we still use the same you know concept of seeding and the reason why we haven't changed anything is because it's not broken it's worked for years for us and um so i'm going to share with you what we've got on, what we've got going on over here we've got comfrey here the items that aren't in germination here are seeds that i saved when we went to madeline island i was really hoping that they were just a couple different shrubs but nothing's happening but you never know with shrubs over here we've got some peony poppy purples. Over here are our blueberries. So we're just trying, this is the first year we're growing blueberries, but we are um, not seeing anything yet. I don't have it in a germ chamber because they're supposed to be started just a little cooler. So I didn't want them to, you know, be started with heat. 
So over here, this is what I really want to talk to you guys about. I've got four trays of lavender. This is the Munstead variety. So it's great for in our zone, Wisconsin zone five here. And I got our lavender to germinate in only five days, you guys. We are at about 14 days today, but it was all green inside the cell at five days. So look at this, it's so awesome. And yes, we do multiple seeding in one cell. This provides a healthy, strong, bushy plant right from the start. You'll get a nice full plant in the first year. That way you're not waiting around three to four years. By next year, they'll be huge. A lot of people will just grow one at a time and you can do that too, but it does take longer for that plant to do something for it to take off outside. So when you do it that way, we just multi-seeded a cell, push it into the soil and lightly topped it off with vermiculite. Over here is the Verbena bonariensis. So with these, they're highly seeded as you can see. And these can be split as they're added into containers or your gardens. And these are the easiest to seed save. These are all from our saved seeds from last fall. And also you guys, all of the eucalyptus. Look at how awesome all of the eucalyptus is looking. Isn't this just gorgeous? Oh my gosh. Look at these little guys. They're so happy. Look at how cute they look. And of course, we got to kick up the fun with the mimosa, also known as the sensitive plant here. The girls love these, so I had to start a lot of them for them. <laughs> they look nice. And our white sage, the germination isn't great here. We've never had this before with white sage, so I'm going to say it's the supplier. So this one was pinky seeds, which usually is our best germinating white sage, and it was not this year. So very, very disappointed. This one here is Southern Seed Exchange. Uh, hardly any germination. Very disappointed. White sage seeds are not an easy germinator. You get low germination rates anyway when you seed white sage, no matter where you get it from. But this is the lowest I've ever seen this year. Uh, over here we've got Neglecta, which is another variety of eucalyptus. One of our favorites because it is highly scented. Lemongrass, I've got two trays here. I'll probably be doing a couple more. With our lemongrass, we got it to germinate in five days. That was a record for us this year. But we also had quite a few sunny days in a row, which really helps when it's in that germination chamber. It helps heat it up nice. We've got sweetgrass. I know it looks empty, but it's not. It's finally germinating. Sweetgrass is a slow germinator, but let's get in on here. See, there he is. So it's just starting to pop up. And over here we have some yarrow. This is a berry mix. So it's multicolored, really pretty colors. And these we're just gonna add in in areas where we feel like, you know, some perennial gardens need some additions or fill-ins. Inside right now we've got rosemary. Um, over here we've got the coneflower, whorehound, and common sage. I don't want to open them because it's cloudier today and it's really holding in that moisture. So if the sun comes out, I'll open it. But until then, I'm keeping them close. That's why I'm not opening them to even show you guys. Otherwise, it's going to let out all of that humidity built up in there. So we do have some tropical seeds that we started and they're taking forever, which is totally normal. But we do have a, a tray of eucalyptus right here and that's starting to germinate. So I will have to take those out soon. Um, I did a new, a new tray of white sage here because I had to order more seeds just because we did not have enough plants of it. And those are starting to germinate really nice as you can see the little greens. Sweet wormwood is in here. I think I, yep, I see some green coming up in there. Um, motherwort, valerian, which is great for anxiety and being feeling stress-free and relaxed and some mugwort 
So as you can see, there's a lot going on in here. I'm gonna get some work done and we'll see you guys next time.